So I've been looking through all of your amazing spices and I've decided to go with this guy. Ah, cool. The Dukkha That's one of my favorites, honestly. Oh. So we're gonna pair that with some free range Karoo lamb. And then also this. Oh, you've chosen the date and then one. Cool. Oh. I mean, I've done, and I've cooked with a lot of balsamic vinegar. I've, I've never in my life experienced something like this. So that smell of the, the oh, ham. It's just like, like a little trip to Spain, spend a nice little holiday on the island and you eat that little tapas, you know, the date and ham ones. And it's exactly the taste of the wedding. So Karoo lamb, um, the Karoo is kind of in between the Western Cape, the Northern Cape, and the Eastern Cape. Um, and they are proper free range lamps, so none of them are confined to any spaces. And they get to forage on local succulents and herbs like rosemary, thyme, sage. And they, they kind of say that the lamb is kind of seasoning itself, you know, preparing it for us, which I think <laughs> is quite good. cute. So we're gonna do, we're gonna sear the lamb. Um, this is the ribeye. And we're gonna do it nice and rare, and let it rest. And then in the same pan, I'm gonna deglaze it with this amazing balsamic vinegar, some lamb stock, and then we're gonna whisk in some butter. Mm. And I'm gonna make some mashed potato with lots of butter and creme fraiche. And some glazed carrots, which we're also gonna dip into the dukkah. Cool. You ready? Let's go. Sweet, that's my cue, guys. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's been doing all day. It's fine, we can do it on our own. Yeah. Important thing when you're cooking lamb, or any red meat, really, is you wanna get the pan really nice and hot before you put any oil or anything in it. So I'm gonna put that on and take our beautiful piece of lamb and I wanna season it with lots of salt and pepper. You always need to season meats. I think you need to season, people that actually don't season it enough. If you're gonna season it afterwards, you're gonna get the, the flavor just on the crust and not nothing in the actual meat itself. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use, this is a local olive oil from Morgan's The Wine Estate. So people say you shouldn't really cook with olive oil. That depends. I yeah, do it, it all kind the time. of works with this I dish, I think so. Each oil has different applications. So we want to hear a nice sizzle. And the trick here is not to move it around too much. It's called the Maillard reaction. So you get like a nice caramelization on the meat. So searing means it's raw on the inside, but crusty on the outside, more or less. Right? Correct. Yeah, so you want a nice caramelization on the outside. People often get asked, do you want a medium, medium rare, well done? What would you say is a perfect serve for, for lamb? It depends on the cuts, but generally I would say medium rare. I mean, you can push it to medium, but because it's such a really nice lamb, it's with so much flavor, you want to keep it as rare as possible. Okay, so I think we can give this guy a turn. We first just want to check and make sure that it's got nice caramelization on it. Not that good. I'm going to get the carrots on the go. And we're going to put just a pinch of salt. So you just cook it in water or? There's a little bit of water because carrots, they need a bit of cooking. I don't, I'm not a fan of like either overcooked or very al dente mm. carrots. So we're going to let that evaporate. By the time that's evaporated, then the butter will start melting and then we can add the honey and then we'll have a nice sheen on it. It'll be perfectly cooked. And then we're going to rub some of the dukkha on it. So with all meats, if you're sealing meats, you want to seal, people often just seal two sides. There's always four sides to meat. So you want to kind of put it on its side like that. And then you're going to seal the underside of the meat. You're going to do it again on the other side. It's one of the best sounds on, on the planet, isn't it? <laughs> so that's going really nicely. That we're going to leave to rest. You want to leave it rest for at least half the amount of time that you've cooked it. So you've okay. cooked it for, I don't know, maybe four minutes. But I'm going to let it rest a lot longer than that. Um, if you wanted your, your steak done a little bit more, you'd finish it off in the oven. So you'd do it at about 180 degrees and maybe five, 10 minutes. Okay, so now that the meat is resting, I'm gonna start with the sauce. We're gonna use the same pan because there's a lot of flavor still left in there. So because this is quite reduced already, I don't wanna get it reduced too much. So the minute I've added, I'm gonna add some stock. Um, I don't want it to get too thick. Yes. Generally, if it leaves a trail in your pan, then it's ready. That's reduced a little bit, so I'm just gonna cut this butter up. So there you can see that it's kind of leaving a, a trail behind it. So I think that's reduced enough now. So you wanna put, when you whisk butter into something at the end, you need to put the heat off, otherwise it's gonna split. So you put in the butter, 
and then you can... It'll start to look like it's about a split, but as you whisk it, it'll start coming together. Okay, once that's all incorporated... More of the butter, and then I'm also going to put some honey. Just a, and, bit, huh? just a little bit. <laughs> I want to try and make it nice and sticky. You kind of need that when you're putting the, the spice into the dukkha on it. Let's get cracking on the mash. So I've already cooked the potatoes. Now this may seem like a bit of a tedious task, but it's worth it. So yep. you can just mash it. Using a regular masher. How much do you think we should add? You guys are chef. I think we should do all of it. Do it. Cool. Okay. okay. You know, the, the French seem to stay thin, so, and they eat a ton of butter. So we're gonna use a- And they drink a lot of wine. Exactly. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, because I eat a ton of butter and I drink a lot of wine, <laughs> but I'm not staying thin. <laughs> I don't know if you know Jan Hendrik from the best days, and a South African chef that's got a restaurant ah, in, yeah, yeah. How in how Nice. Had you the one who got famous in France. Huh? Yes. Yeah. He's back in South Africa now. It's funny, so many cooks coming from South Africa being here just a cook and then ending up in the rest of the world and be like number one somewhere. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I think there's only two South African chefs that have managed to achieve Michelin stars. Okay, so now that the butter's kind of incorporated, I'm going to add some creme fraiche. It's about two tablespoons. So this may seem strange because it's not cream, but I wanted it to have like a bit of a Bit of acidity to it because everything else is quite rich. Just gonna whisk that in. If you're feeling it's too thick and you can't seem to get it to mash properly, you can just add a touch of milk. Just add a little bit by little bit. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. I'm gonna season that with some salt. This is fine the way it is, but I'm gonna do. One step further and just put it into a sieve and push it through. It's getting you, more creamy than one. Then you get it really nice and smooth. Just be careful, you also don't want to overwork potatoes because it can become quite gluey. I can do this all night. So I'm just going to do enough for the That's portion. That's the reason why I don't do it. <laughs> it does take, as I said, it takes a bit of effort. Um, it depends how much energy you have, how far you want to go, who your guests are. Today, all of the dishes we have are just like focusing on the aroma, on the taste, but the plates actually just look like, ah, just put it on the plate and let's do it. So I'm expecting you doing like a fabulous fine dine dish now. Oh, no pressure, eh? No, no. But have a look, it's a lot smoother than what... Yeah, now you're putting yeah. pressure on me when my kids see it. And they say, Daddy, do it next time. Well, the there same you go. Thing, please. And I don't have any reason you can't because you know you know how. The last step we're going to do now is to take the carrots, we're going to roll them in some... You can feel this quite... I mean, you know what I love about your docker is that it's not too fine. It's actually got some nice texture on it. It's quite nice and crunchy. So I'm just going to take them and just do that. You know what docker means? Actually not. No. So it's <clears throat> derived from an Arabic word to pound. So when it was originally made, it was made in a pestle and mortar like this. And they used to pound all the nuts and stuff. Just a little FYI. Are you ready to play it? Definitely. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the potato. And then we're going to make a little whirl. And just use the honey and the butter. And there's a little cavity to put your gravy. That's very rare, yep. but that's just the way I like it. So I'm gonna do three little medallions. I think the best way to experience lamb, so you get the original taste from the meat. It's nice, yeah? And we're just gonna take our book of carrots. And now for our grape. First time Paddy has no good timing. I think we're nearly done. And then, of course, we need to garnish it. So this is a... That looks incredible. You like? Yeah. Good. This Always right at the right time. Called nasturtium. Nearly, yeah. Which is, a, it literally grows like a weed all over South Africa. And they've got these beautiful flowers, they're either orange or yellow or purple. 
but the leaves are actually really, really good for you and they taste quite similar to Rocket. And there you have it. It smells amazing. Should we get stuck in? Can I, can I have it? You can. Oh. <laughs>